Previously on Recipes for Success, Will Merrick launched the second installment of his Mama Sun restaurant in Hong Kong. The journey had its fair share of obstacles and setbacks. However, Will and his team were able to rise to the challenge and launch to great fanfare. After the hustle and bustle of Hong Kong, Tasmania has a starkly different feel to it. There's a chilled, relaxed atmosphere and it's almost soothing after the stress of setting up the restaurant over the last few weeks. So while I've got a bit of downtime to check out what Tassie has to offer, I'm also here to work. And again, I've got a lot to do in a short amount of time. I'm here for the Seva Tasmania Festival and I've brought with me four chefs from Indonesia. Before we get into the kitchen, I want to see what's available locally and give these guys a bit of a look at what's on offer down here. To find the heart and soul of any city, you have to go to the local markets. And if that is the markets on Sunday, or if that is the local fish market, or wherever it is, that's where you start to see where the culture is and what people are eating. And through understanding what people are eating, you can understand how they live and how their culture will be as well. And I think, you know, for me, walking around here, you know, produce is fantastic, people are super friendly here, and I just really enjoy the atmosphere. Kind of, I miss Sydney, or I miss Australia. Um, after being in Indonesia for so long. Would you be able to give me some edible flowers for Wednesday? Everything's made here, everything's made local. Besok, saya mulai start untuk preparation untuk big function, to event. Jadinya, sebelum prepare, saya tahu bagaimana keadaan barang di sini bisa jalan-jalan mengenai tidak hanya bisa tahu ingredient yang saya potong, tapi saya tahu juga Barang dari mana asal daripada vegetable meat yang saya akan gunakan untuk untuk menghandle event big event besok. The real work is gonna start tomorrow, so I'm gonna enjoy this day as much as possible before the hard work begins. Being in Bali, for us, when we see produce, we have to go out to the farms and we have to go way up into the hills and, and kind of see it. And you know, it's 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 fairly similar. And to, to be honest, I'm glad to see how Indonesia um, is slowly changing and is slowly getting further and further towards what this is. What I do notice here is that people are more interested in food. And I think maybe that's because of television, but people are genuinely interested in food. So it's great to see people getting into it. And I think it's great for the guys to also see this as well and for them to be part of it and to see where things are coming from and to see how everyday people are interested in it and they're chefs and they should be even more interested than what these people are in it. Saver Tasmania presents an array of events once a year to celebrate Tasmania's world-class produce and beverages in Hobart. In 2014, Will Merrick has been invited as the guest international chef to prepare a special five-course dinner at the Henry Jones Hotel in four days' time and to cook the main dish at the 650-seat Saver Long Table Dinner in seven days' time. I've had my eye on Will, so to speak, for, for the last few years and approached him and he agreed to come along. Uh, and you know, his best restaurant in Indonesia on the San Pellegrino list this year, expanding his number of restaurants. So in fact, he's the perfect fit for us in terms of, you know, celebrity status and all of this kind of thing. 
all international chefs, they always come with three or four um, sous chefs uh, or people to help them. Because of course we understand that they working in a foreign kitchen, you know, the setup is different, the equipment might be quite different at times as well. So Will is doing a five or six course degustation menu, so we can't expect him to just use the local hosting establishment staff. He does need the support of his own staff, and that's been every year the same with all of the other international chefs. It's actually really nice to see the guys here, see what they're doing. The Asian influence is great. I know being Australian, we're heavily Asian influenced with food as well, so it's something that uh, most Australian chefs enjoy cooking. Um, have the guys done the panna cottas, etc. Yeah, the Did they do the jelly today? Yeah, they're in the stomach. Okay, let's have a look. It's a challenge working in a foreign kitchen with a mixture of staff from back home and the local guys. But it's a good challenge and part of the reason why I like these types of gigs. Beautiful. A bit more citrus would have been good, but it's okay. In the cucumber or the. Yep. I really hope when we start working full on that both our teams can gel, but you never really know when the heat is on. Okay, so we're here at Frogmore Creek, and this is the first time we've been out properly. We've been to the market this morning, but now we're going to go and taste some Tasmanian wine, which is one of the highlights of Tasmania. And more importantly for me, I think what is really good is to bring the guys out here. You have Wachik that lives in Sinyaraja and they grow a lot of grapes, but he hasn't seen anything on this level. And also it's good for them to indulge in a little bit of Australian culture. And of course, winemaking is Australian culture. Well, welcome everyone to Frogmore Creek Wines. Thank you. Frogmore Creek was started uh, about 96. Our okay. owner, Jack Kidwala, and founder, Tony Shearer, planted the original vineyard uh, across the mountains here at mm -hmm. our Pennisite. Uh, fully organic, sustainable vineyard. So Frogmore Creek is really known for what wines? What are your signature Sparkling. Grapes? Sparkling, yeah. Which we have a Chardonnay as well as a Pinot Noir based sparkling. Riesling. Yeah. Is it dry, sweet? Both. Both. One okay. of each. Come on in and we'll get you a glass of wine. Okay, sounds good. Boys, go, minum. I'm excited about trying some of Clifford's wine and I've heard the food that Chef Ruben dishes up is amazing. So uh, Ruben has sent out some of Fantastic. his clotheslines here. Uh, Thanks, see guys. So what we have is a sweet potato, serrano yep. fig, salmon crackling with salmon, and some rye with tuna, chili, okay. and condensed milk. Fantastic. So most of the food that you do here is, is more Western orientated or is it a bit of a mixture? I think uh, the modern Australian palate is really changing. It's quite dynamic. Yep. And uh, modern Australian cuisine has uh, really come of age. Cheers. Cheers. Great to have you guys. Thank you guys. Thank, Thank you for having us. Pleasure. Mm. An apricot comes out strong, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. You smell apricot? Yeah. yeah. It's a great treat to be able to sample these great foods and wines. I really miss drinking wine in Indonesia. For you, the flavours are all completely new, yeah? You're thinking Asian, but here they've done you know more of a western kind of fusion style thing i know nothing about wine i mean i know it's an alcohol and you know it makes you drunk but i know nothing more than that so this is very interesting for me the food is actually very interesting like the crackling it's very pretty it tastes very good and also there's one with the green curry foam it really blew me away di sini green curry seperti es krim Kalau di Bali, green curry, tomato stock, isinya ada long bean, eggplant, and peace snapper. Frogmore Creek co-owner Tony Shearer was keen to meet Will after he heard he was in town. So what gave you the inspiration to come from California to here? Well, you know, first it was an adventure. We were only going to be here a couple of years. Right. But we just never went back. So the inspiration was what? You were a farmer beforehand. Yes, I was a vegetable producer, but 
you know, in San Francisco in those days, we would get lots of input from chefs on mm -hmm. what, what they wanted, mm -hmm. and that really fueled my passion. Uh, I'm not just growing something that's going to sit on a supermarket shelf, mm -hmm. and somebody who's going to buy it is just buying it because it's there. But I'm producing things that chefs are going to create. Tony's passion for produce is undeniable. And not being a spring chicken, it's really good to see him wanting to develop this passion. And do you find that um, since the past five years, the tourism has increased dramatically, so therefore there's more chefs coming in here, there's more restaurants, there's more of a demand? Absolutely. All of the above. I mean, it's the tourists are coming, people who, in, who enjoy and know good food. Yeah. You know, they'll end up at restaurants here and they'll say, that's very good. You know, I mean, we're not just a meat and potato uh, place, Yeah. you know, uh, and, and we have to thank the, sh the great chefs for that, that have, that have ventured down here. One you know, of these I'm chefs saying. is Ruben Cooper. Ruben has an impressive CV with extended sous chef experience at many illustrious three and two star establishments plus four years as head chef and restaurant manager at the hotel restaurant Herberg Molkarten in Hatton. So today we're going to do a lemon for bena panna cotta, which we got here. Fantastic. So this is literally go out to the garden, pick it up, and it's like really... Uh, oh, wow. It's insane. Yeah. It's almost like the lemon basil that we uh, use in Bali. It's good, isn't it? It's very, very good. It's really nice. And so we infuse this in milk, and we make this uh, into a panna cotta, mm -hmm. which we got here. Um, Basically, we like to play around a little bit with the format, I guess. Yeah. So basically, a little bit of a classic dessert, but then in a little little. It jacket. looks like it's got a bit of Lego in there. Yeah, it is Lego. It, it is, is Lego. Lego. Did you set it in Lego? Yeah, we we had uh, silicon molds. Oh, okay. And okay. They've got like a Lego. You didn't block. steal your kids' toys. Uh, don't sell them. <laughs> <laughs> You'll so, be upset. So basically, uh, we've got like a, a little bit of a take on on a creme brulee. Okay. So we got some uh, burnt coconut and vanilla cream. And then we pipe it, we freeze it very quickly. Okay. And so by the time we start burning it again with sugar, it sort of melts down in its normal, um, in its normal form. form. So a little bit of um, barley, I guess. Yeah. yeah, got a coconut in there. There you go. Got your lemon basil, get your Lego. And then the Legos, which are basically, um, it's a really, really thin, soft, silky sort of texture. So a bit of, bit of the crispiness of the sugar and then yep. the really soft sort of texture. Of that. Yeah. So we got the Lego on, we got the burnt cream on, we got yep. to just add a little bit of uh, anglaise. And then we've got some caramel snow. So basically this is a powder that's uh, obviously a powder for now. Yep. Once you put it in your mouth it turns back to a sticky caramel. Okay. So that's one of your things where it's still like sticky caramel, yep. but it starts out differently. So a little bit of a uh, fig paste. Okay. We got some uh, freeze-dried mandarin, so basically just uh, mandarin segments. Wow, let's try these. And uh, really crispy, mm. really airy. Insane, it tastes like, almost like honeycomb. It is in a way. Mm. Oh, I need to remember that name, thanks yeah. for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so basically it's just Mandarin us, honeycomb. Uh, it's a li just a little bit of uh, texture to the dish, a um, little bit of tartness. Yep. And mm. so basically we got the, um, the freeze-dried mandarins. And That's great. With the Verbena and the mandarin cutting through the citrus of the creaminess of the um, panna cotta is great. Right? Interesting, isn't it? Yeah, very interesting. And so that's that. And then we got the um, <clears throat> so basil ice cream. So don't really need the um, the old-fashioned uh, ice machine. Right, yeah. Okay. So that's that. Um, just a few little um, chocolates that we temper. Uh, nothing special really, okay. but just to give it a little bit of. Um, and you make these yourselves? Yeah, yeah. So, wow. so and finally, um, on the basil, um, air, we have a little bit of air. Oh, you got the foam there. Lip Insane. Well, it's basically it's that. air, so yeah. it's, it, it's really nothing, Yeah. but it's full of flavor. So wow. you put this in your mouth, it's like an, uh, an air. Enhances the, that. Yeah. So basically, we hide that under there. Finally, just a few little. The garnishes of verbena on there. Little verbena. There you have your Lego lemon verbena panacotta. With Most some impressive. Cocoa cream and basil ice cream. All right, let's dig in. Yeah, you're Grab some, some spoons. spoons. There you Fantastic. go. Fantastic. Hold on. Aha. The dessert needs some a little dessert bit of wine. wine. Got you. Uh, we were just talking about it. The. Um, so which one's this? This is the dry, the ice riesling. Ice riesling. Yeah. So it's a little bit of uh, inspiration dry between yeah, the both. Yeah, it is. So dig it. Let's see okay. what you think. Hmm. That's insane. With okay. the um, mandarin and the panna cotta. Cheers, by the way. 
<laughs> Cheers. Good job. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks. Nice. You've been cooking hard. You had a hard service and you're digging in. It was great to have you. Very good. Thank you so much. It's been you're an welcome. absolute pleasure. It's been inspirational to see something that actually I know nothing about. Um, so it's 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 great to see that. It's our pleasure, um, totally. Hopefully uh, we should show again. Yeah, and hopefully well, if you're in Bali. I must come to Bali, yeah. Come up and uh, do some of the street food that we do in Bali. That'd see be that. awesome. See what yeah. you guys do. Great, Thanks, listen, man. thank you. Pleasure. Have a good time in Turkey. Will do. Fantastic. Bye. Bye. So yeah, I just uh, had with America and these guys over um, for lunch. It's really awesome. I mean, it's always good to have like college team, especially from Asia. And you know, Will especially is like such an excited guy, so interested in different forms of food and just the whole background of it. And you know, we sort of related, obviously, to Europe. That was probably one of the best meals I've had in a long time, especially with Ruben and tasting the wines. He's a great chef. Also, I got the opportunity to meet Tony, and Tony's a great character, you know? He's a bit of an old guy from the 60s, and Frogmore Creek, for me, nails it on the head. After checking out the surrounds of Tasmania and sampling the local produce, Will must head back into town and discuss logistics with Marcus Moore. I'm not worried because I've got all the ingredients, all the hard ingredients to sauce are here. And my feeling is, you know, even when I was a chef, as long as it's in the building, I can deal with it. If it's not here, I can't deal with it. So it's all here. And if we all have to work overnight on Thursday night to get it done, that's what it is. Marcus Moore is in charge of logistics for the Saturday Long Table event, as well as purchasing Will's produce for Thursday's Culture Cuisine Dinner at the Henry Jones Hotel. Will's doing two functions, one on Thursday night and one on Saturday. And the one on Thursday I'm not really involved in apart from I've ordered some of the products. So some of the products come here and the rest of the products gone to the other kitchen where he'll be, him and his team will be on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday prepping but I think some of it's got mixed up, so I've just got to sort that out. Then he's just asked for an extra uh, three kilos of dry tamarind, so I'll track that down. And he wants some banana leaves for the function on, or, or paper bark to put the ox cheek on. That's good, it's good. I'm glad that, the, I'm glad that you're doing it. That's one of the reasons why uh, I thought you'd be good for here. Hey, hey, Will, how, how are you? you? Good, buddy. Good. Thank you. Good. Hey, yeah. Stephanie, how are you? I had your shape up after last night. You all right? Oh, I'm good. <laughs> uh, the boys were a bit sheepish this morning. They had their tails between their legs. They're working now. <laughs> yeah, they're yeah. In, they're in the kitchen now. Okay, so you've met them so, already and... Uh, yeah, yeah, they're trimming up the... Um, trimming up the... Sorry, can I take... Yeah, sure, Jesse, sure, 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 sure. Jesse Marcus, sir. Yeah, done. Yeah, you got a master prep list. Okay, you need to you need to sit down with them and give them give them a master prep list because otherwise. It seems that the boys are leaving a lot of the work to Stephanie. Now it might be because she speaks the best English, or because they're lazy. But regardless, Stephanie is going to have to step up. Uh, I'll just go through Henry Jones first. Um, issues that I'm seeing there: Helen Tomatoes should be, I think we discussed, all red. Yeah, heirloom tomatoes, I didn't order them. Okay. So Andre ordered them. Okay. What happened was when I got the list through and I was ordering lemongrass. Yeah. And there was 27 kilos for the long table and yeah. eight kilos for the other. I said to Andre, I'll get those. But so certain things I've ordered and certain okay. things I haven't. So okay. So uh, who do I um, speak to, to? Andre or Terry? Andre or Terry. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, not a good start. Marcus tells me everything is under control, but clearly it's not. I don't like the idea of one person handling one thing and someone else another. It's messy. The cinnamon we'll need because we need that for garnish. Yep. Uh, the star anise we need for garnish. Yep. But the coriander seed, long pepper, candle nut. I think it came. It came, yeah. Candle nut we do need from them because that's a separate thing that you need to check. It, but I think the candle nut is more for the Loire. Yeah. Mumbo Gede. I think bumbu bumbu yang datang mana ya? Yang kayak kemiri segala macam. Kemiri udah buat taruh di sana. I'm just double checking. The, the, I mean, this one. 
It came just now, so I have to double check if everything's here. Uh, terasinya masih ada nggak? Masih sisa nggak terasi? Di mana? Di dalam situ? So. This is the tray. So I'm thinking banana leaf all over it. Yeah, fine, it's Indonesian. Oh, no, sorry. Yeah. Can I just interrupt again? Because Richard had to Will's media engagement has been pushed back all afternoon, and finally the festival publicist drags him away for the shoot. Temperament. These media engagements are all part and parcel with the event. It does take a bit of time, but then again, I made the fellow wait. So, I think it's even. Hopefully, I'll make the paper tomorrow. So, hence why we're a little bit, uh, well, very late, but... Uh, and you're, are you originally Tasmanian, is that right? No, you... certainly not. No. I, I don't have an inbred brother. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Following the meeting with the press, Will is to attend the official opening of the Saver Tasmania Festival. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the courtyard of the Tasmanian Museum and Art Gallery. What a beautiful evening we've got tonight. <laughs> One more <laughs> <laughs> the night's event is Pork Stars and is being hosted by Daniel Wilson from Huxtable and Jesse Gurner from Bomber in Melbourne. The night is a success, but the organisers aren't too impressed with Will's tardiness. However, he eventually arrives and Anne and the team can relax. Yeah. Fabulous job. Thank you. So all the veg has arrived. Got to start prepping tomorrow. I'm a little bit nervous. Got to make sure the guys have a bit of an early night. So we get in there at 8.30 a.m. and start banging out some of the ingredients and some of the chopping. I've got to braise a whole lot of stuff. So really, the pressure is on. And hopefully, as warm as they are here, they'll be the same for me and my event. Fingers crossed, guys.